Six million years ago, we branched off from the family tree we share with our ape cousins and monkey uncles. We may have evolved since then, but there's still a monkey in all of us. In this episode, we'll show you what it takes to be an alpha male. Alphas get first pick at the basics of life. Food, territory, and females. And we're just the same. World leaders, celebrities, even your boss. Human alphas rule the world. With experiments and hidden cameras. I really don't want to die. I really don't want to die. We'll show you how to channel your inner ape to get what you want. We'll be surprising strangers. Aping around. Get out of my box! And looking for that telltale primal behavior. Yeah, hey, look, man. I, what's, what's the problem? You're what's talking. The problem? So get ready to learn the laws of the jungle. Because like it or not, we're going in. So you want to be an alpha. But where do you start? Well, forget everything your girlfriend ever told you. Because the first rule of being an alpha is this. Size matters. In the ape world, it's easy to spot an alpha. They're really big. Alpha gorillas are the only adult males in their troop, and twice the size of the females. Alpha chimps aren't always the largest in their group, but they make up for it by puffing themselves up to look the biggest. It's a display designed to intimidate, as primatologist Charlotte Uhlenbrook discovered. When an alpha male chimp starts to display, everybody gets out the way, and I was obviously not quick enough on that particular occasion. She walked away unharmed to continue her chimp studies, including how they communicate their status. The most fundamental thing that any individual can do to increase their status is to look bigger, and chimps classically raise their hair and when we feel tense the hair on the back of our neck goes up that's the same thing an ape who sees a more dominant one coming doesn't think twice see how he puts his head down and makes himself smaller he's submitting in a very obvious way to see if human apes retain this instinctive behavior charlotte's at the perfect human alpha watering hole a busy city bar and she's brought a couple of friends along. One is five feet, two inches tall, and the other is seven feet, two. They're about to commit the ultimate crime, helping themselves to another man's beer. The bar is rigged with hidden cameras to catch the drinker's immediate responses. Will they react to size using the same body language as apes? Look how quickly the first victim reacts when the smaller man takes his drink. <laughs> Good try, mate. <laughs> Let's look at that again. The drinker immediately stops him in his tracks. He's not physically attacked like an ape in the jungle might be. Instead, he gets the human equivalent. He's sent packing with a patronizing laugh. Now it's the big guy's turn. Watch for the difference in body language when the same drinker has his beer taken again. This time there's no order to stop. And definitely no laughing. It's not so funny now. Our little man is back to try and steal another beer. Once again, he's failed. And the big guy's next victim? The drinker sees him, but doesn't dare challenge him. Time and time again, the shorter man is confronted, and the big guy is allowed to do as he pleases. Let's rewind and find out what happened to the little guy in ape terms. 
That was an absolutely immediate reaction. The victim gives him a direct stare, which in the primate world is a definite threat. But how did the drinkers react when the bigger beer bandit went in? As soon as he saw how big the guy was, he wasn't prepared to challenge him. The way he's turned and he's put his palm up, that is an absolutely classic gesture in chimps to try and solicit support. You can see, even before anything's happened, the little guy at the bar has moved out of the way. It's as if he's sensed this big guy coming up behind him. The victim glances at him, confirms just how enormous he is, and then does a very, very abrupt head movement as he averts his gaze and puts his head down. Again, that's something that you would see right across the primates, kind of submissive behavior. It's a fact of life. Being bigger helps you get what you want. Research shows that an incredible 58% of Fortune 500 CEOs are over six feet tall, compared with 14.5% of the general public. Big is definitely best. But what if you're not six feet two and built like a tent? Well, even if you don't look big, you can still walk big. Alpha chimps use their power walk. With their hair up on end, chest puffed out and arms swinging, they're saying, don't mess with me, I'm in charge. And perhaps not surprisingly, this alpha swagger is also a favorite of our world leaders. But it's not the only alpha trait these heads of state use to their advantage. Another trick that can help give alphas an edge in their battle for power is gray hair. Male gorilla's hair turns gray by about 15 years old. The silver back signals their status as the dominant male of the group. And the same is true for humans. So put away the hair dye, because we automatically perceive higher status in men when we see those salt and pepper shades. Apes have already shown us how to get that alpha look, but they can also help us master the meeting. Many of the greetings we use today have primal origins. Chimpanzees reach out to touch hands just like we do. These more intimate chimp greetings may also look familiar, but they're actually communicating their dominance. Here, the lower ranking female with her baby is literally kissing the hand of the alpha male. He keeps eye contact and holds his head high while she puts her head down in submission. These two hugging males have just decided who's alpha. See how one has his arms outside the hug? This is a sure sign he's gained the upper hand. So how much of this primal behavior do we carry around with us today? To find out, we've set up a unique experiment to show the ways in which an alpha reaches the top and stays there. Leading the experiment is former Special Forces interrogator Greg Hartley. In his job, being able to identify and dominate an alpha male is crucial. He's invited six complete strangers to come and help rebuild a car. And they all think they've got what it takes to be an alpha. I've been groomed and trained and shown the responsibility of being a leader. And I actually don't know how to live life otherwise. Yes, I am a leader. I have led uh, troops in the past. Why am I a leader? Because I make things happen for not only myself, but for other people. I've played sports, I've been a captain of sports teams. Um, I know I can assume a leadership role if need be. I think for myself, and leaders usually think for themselves. I mean, no, follower, I'm not much of a follower. I usually go my own way about things. But as long as our team is sharing the same ideas, we're all leaders. What they don't know is that they're secretly being filmed to see who will become the alpha of the group. Humans make first impressions in about 30 seconds. By knowing exactly what to do, you can establish dominance in that very first meeting. We've seen how chimps use subtle body language, like getting the upper hand, holding their head high, and making bold eye contact to establish dominance in the first seconds of any greeting. Now keep an eye on our grease monkey's body language as they meet for the very first time. Rich is already in the room. Next in is Junior who enters with the big strides of a chimp and a silverback style head of gray hair. Then, it's Novum's turn. Rich, Novum, it's me, a pleasure. I'm Dr. Junior. 
But who's got the upper hand? Junior swaggers in the room with oversized steps. He moves in and exaggerates male behavior and then reaches out and grabs Rich's hand so that he's in a dovenant position when he's shaking hands. Novem looks comfortable and casual as he walks into the room taking small steps. Everything looks okay until he reaches and grabs Junior's hand and then he turns, touches his cap, drops his chin over his throat and cast his eyes down and away. Novem has revealed his status by acting submissively toward Junior, who is still the alpha male of the three. I guess not today though. No. Next in, it's Justin. Here comes Justin walking in the room with large alpha posture, Justin. moving comfortably. Justin Junior. Junior? Junior. Justin is in the room has a large handshake, his chin up, and as he grabs the other guy's hands, he puts his hand in the upper position on top of theirs. Here's a challenger for Junior. Along with Junior, Justin's textbook ape-like dominant gestures put him in the running for alpha status. Now it's Isom's turn to try and master the meeting. Isom is a non-event. As he walks in, no one pays him any attention. Junior and Justin are focused on each other. Isom finds food and moves off to the edge of the herd, much like Rich. Last in is Naftali. If he's going to challenge for alpha status, he'll have to master meeting a whole room of human apes. Naftali. Nice Naftali. This guy strides in comfortably, has an oversized smile. He even stops and forces people to come to him for handshakes. He's handing them out and holding court. Then he stands in the middle of the group and he becomes a center of attention. Everyone is, is his audience. So Naftali has just shaken up the chemistry. I think we may have a new alpha. But we still have Junior and Justin competing for second. So round one of our battle of the alphas goes to Naftali. But what will happen when his alpha status is challenged? What's your problem? You're What's talking. Problem? Yeah, so are you talking. And how will people react when this alpha uses guerrilla tactics to become the ultimate personal space invader? We've already seen how our alpha ape cousins use their size and greeting methods to dominate others. But there's another way alphas teach us to control groups of people by acing the space. In the ape world, alphas control the group by controlling the space. A really confident alpha like this silverback gorilla takes center stage, making everyone else scatter. By moving out of his way, the other gorillas instinctively submit to the dominant male. This displacement is a simple but very effective reminder of who's boss. So could this same trick work in the human jungle? To find out, we've rigged hidden cameras at a shopping mall and sent in our very own silverback gorilla. He might not look alpha, but he's definitely going to act like one by finding out if human apes also act submissively when their most valuable territory, their personal space, is invaded. No one seems to question his alpha-like behavior. They scatter just like displaced subordinate gorillas. Or shuffle over to let him sit where he wants. He acts just like a silverback, going wherever he likes. People submit to his dominant moves by getting up and moving out of the way. For chimpanzees, dominating their territory is much harder. Chimps can live in groups of more than a hundred and have to defend a much larger area to protect their food and females. Alphas use elaborate displays to control the group, dragging branches or throwing rocks to dominate as much space as possible. So how will our grease monkeys fare in their territorial battle for dominance of the group? They think they're here to take part in a TV show about cars. But actually, alpha expert Greg Hartley is secretly analyzing them to find out who's the alpha male. Watching their greetings, 
he finds potential alphas in Junior and Justin. But the real master of the meeting was Naftali, who at this point is the most likely true alpha. They're given a team task, but that's not what we're interested in. Instead, we'll be watching the fight to control the space around them in a silent battle for dominance. So what we're going to do is look at territory, look at how they stake their claim, how they manage their territory and their property, and who owns the most at the end of the game. In the jungle, displacing subordinate apes, taking the best spot and using physical displays to dominate space are crucial to establishing alpha status. See how many alpha territorial moves you can spot in the grease monkey's battle for space, which starts with choosing where to sit. They all jockey for position to move into chairs. Neftali is hanging back for some reason. Keep an eye on what happens when two of them end up going for the same chair. As they move into the room, Isom moves in, but Neftali is having no part of that and sends him on his way. And what he's doing is saying, I can take what I want, when I want, and how I want it. It's a perfect example of human ape displacement. And Isom walks away in defeat, chin down in submission to the more dominant male. Now watch how the group responds to Naftali's bold display. Justin takes a central position. A great spot for an alpha to control his group. And in response, Junior immediately starts to take up more space of his own. Now the turf war is going to start. Junior's starting to make himself larger and larger. But notice Justin has control of all the tools and he is expanding his real estate as well. An interesting note is that Junior, while he's taking more space, he's not willing to encroach on Naftali's space. He's using Justin as a human shield. Naftali is quiet while the action plays out. But he responds to Junior's space-invading show of dominance with a big alpha display of his own. Now we gotta do one of these right here. All right. By balling up paper and putting his materials all over the room. Neftali is staking claim to space all around him. And that's not all. The subordinate apes even help maintain Naftali's space. The other two, trying to accommodate Neftali and his conquering of space, skulk around and pick up the paper. It's clear that these two are submissive to Neftali's alpha male. All in! <laughs> this is a classic alpha ape at work. And Junior immediately retreats, reducing his space. Naftali takes control of the proceedings with all attention on him. But I would rather see that the project actually does well. At the end of round two, we've seen Justin take control of the resources. We've seen Junior try to hold on by endorsing it in the Alpha space. But at this point, neither has mounted a successful challenge to Naftali. I think that's good. The Grease Monkey's power hierarchy already seems set in place. What do you think will happen when a really hot female ape enters the group? Hi. Hey. And what amazing physical changes happen when we take acting like a chimp to a whole new level. We've seen how the Grease Monkeys attempt to control space just like alpha apes do. But what happens to the grease monkey's power hierarchy when a female ape enters the group? Feel free to get goofy. In the ape world, the battle for space and dominance is not a quiet one. So if you want things to start going your way, you have to take another page out of the alpha rulebook. Use your voice. With all this screaming and grunting and barking, you could be forgiven for thinking that all chimps sound the same. But you couldn't be further from the truth. These are pant hoots. They're a call sign distinctive to each individual chimp. And in alpha males, it's all about making as much noise as possible. High-ranking individuals are a bit louder. Um, 
It may well be that it's just simply because they are more confident, they're more assertive, but it also maybe it's that they are sort of demonstrating their communication skills. <laughs> Tone is another really important factor. No deep sounds are associated with big body size. So if you're trying to threaten um, another individual, drop your voice. Humans will often try to lower the tone of their voice in order to sound more authoritative. So macho men have deeper voices. Because both of us love big action movies. It has nothing to do with real big muscles. It sounds pretty obvious, but how much can the pitch of your voice actually affect other people's behavior? To find out, we sent our own cheeky chip to stake out some personal territory in the middle of a busy train station. It's his box, and he's going to try and defend it from the human apes rushing for their trains. First, he's going to use a soft and high tone of voice. Let's see if anyone obeys his orders. Get out of my box. 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 No one could be less interested in our chimp's demand. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. He can't stop anyone invading his territory. Get out of my box. There is no box. Now he's going to adopt an alpha chimp's voice. Low in tone and loud in volume. But will anyone really take notice? Get out of my box. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. Suddenly, everyone is going out of their way to avoid trespassing on the Alpha Chimp's territory. Get out of my box. Get out of my box. No one stops to think why. They're just instinctively doing what he says. Get out of my box. They'll even stop in their tracks to obey his unusual but masterful command. Get out of my box. 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 With his alpha voice, our chimp has become king of his jungle box. Get out of my box! Weeding, they're actually, because some of them are almost stepping into the box and then uh, stop and then go round. Just without even consciously being aware of it, they're so influenced by the authority of his tone that they're obeying his command. Just like in chimps. Get out of my box! That's a nice box. Thanks. We've already discovered how alpha apes use their size, space, and voice to maintain their status. Now cast your mind back to our huge alpha male who stole other people's beer. His size meant he didn't come across much resistance. But look what happens here. Despite his slight frame, this brave drinker stands up to the massive human ape and takes his beer back. But what stopped him from instinctively submitting to the larger ape? Let's take another look. Have you spotted it? That's right. He's got a female friend. Because having a woman to defend brings out the alpha in any man. Pay attention and you'll find out what girl power can do for you when a trip to the zoo turns into a nightmare as a raging 200-pound gorilla oh my God. threatens to join oh my God. the party. Oh my God. I really don't want to die. I really don't want to die. In the ape world, being alpha is everything. And nothing gets the males jostling and fighting for position more than the presence of a female. They all want a mate, but only the alpha is guaranteed to get one. So to be a successful alpha, you're going to have to be able to get the girl. For all apes, the ultimate prize in the battle for dominance is getting the chance to mate with the female. Huge silverbacks have no trouble getting first pick of the females. But alpha chimps living in large groups face stiff competition. Even if you are not the highest ranking individual, there's always 
potential for mating. Other males are always kind of waiting in the wings, waiting for their opportunity. But one of the best strategies for amongst chimps um, is to basically try and lure the female away from the group. A fertile female creates tension in the group because each male ups his game. But to stand any chance of mating, lower ranking males have to be sneaky. See how this male is constantly looking around to make sure the alpha can't see him? And when the coast is clear, he seizes his opportunity? And we're not much different. I was unfaithful. I had affairs. I cheated. Even though humans settle down with mates, it's this instinctive ape-like urge to battle for females which can still drive male behavior. It's time to rejoin our group of wannabe alphas. They think they're taking part in a TV show about cars. They don't know that alpha specialist Greg Hartley is secretly analyzing the instinctive struggle for power within the group. They've only just met, and a hierarchy has already formed <laughs> with Naftali as the alpha male of the group. In the jungle, alphas get first pick of the girls. But all the males jostle for position when she's around, in the hope of getting a piece of the action. Right now, the grease monkeys are on a break. So let's see what happens when we introduce an attractive female ape into the group. When Neftali screams, hey, what he's doing is drawing attention to himself from the woman hey. and staking claim to the woman with this group. It's what all alphas do. And having done it, watch how Naftali's confidence builds and how he starts to dominate. I can have everybody just kind of line up. Can we be friends and all that, or is it You can do whatever you want. Neftali demonstrates dominance by putting his arms up over the other two men in the picture. They immediately react by putting their hands in front of their genitals. It's called the fig leaf posture. That's a threat response posture. But Neftali's clearly trying to establish, look who I am. That's for her more than anything else that he's doing. That's, again, posturing and, and he's pounding his chest. It's all chimp-like behavior in the presence of a female. But keep an eye on what happens when she gives the non-alphas a chance to interact. Sorry, I'm having a problem. I can't. Here you see Justin trying to figure out what to do. Damsel in distress. Let me take a look at it for you. This is really silly. So, got to help her. And he runs over. Are you trying to turn it on? Junior is going to go over and help as well, because Junior needs to demonstrate that he's at least as good as the secondary alpha. OK. That might. Is that better? Thank you. That's it. Junior returns with confidence bolstered by contact with Lauren. No longer fig leaves. Isom feels that same confidence and crosses his arms. Now it's an all-out battle for female attention. And feel free to get goofy. <laughs> <laughs> when Neftali starts to display, Isom immediately covers up as if to say, don't look at me. One, two, three. So look at all the power struggles going on here. Justin starts by expanding out. Even Junior does kind of a Fonzie. Then, of course, Neftali has to show the superior body language and show part of his actual body. Naftali has to get the girl, and he wastes no time in making his next move. So what are you doing this long Can weekend? Can we get one more group shot? Yeah. Oh, jump the gun on that one. And another uh, action shot. Wow. Our alpha male's just been knocked off his perch, and by a woman. So what are you doing this long can weekend? Can we get one more group shot? Yeah. Oh, jump the gun on that one. After he's injured, you can even see his body language starts to become more strutty. He's even now concerned about where he is in the picture, how he stands, where he's at. He needs to re-demonstrate that I am in fact Alpha when everyone knew it a few minutes ago. Thanks to our female ape, Naftali's Alpha status is now on the line. In our final test, Super Alpha Greg will go head-to-head -head with Naftali. But who will come out on top? We've seen how important it is for an Alpha ape to get the girl. But there are more alpha techniques we can borrow from our eight cousins to get you on top of the game. Including one very simple trick. You ready for this? That can give you an ultra alpha testosterone boost. We've seen how important females can be in making or breaking an alpha ape. And if the role of alpha male is still up for grabs, 
we can look to our ape cousins again for our next alpha rule. Fake it to make it. Incredibly, scientists have discovered that by pumping ourselves up like an alpha ape, we can actually become one. In their moments of feeling most powerful, alpha apes adopt big, wide postures. Can this kind of big body language make human apes feel more powerful? To find out, Hollywood's number one ape actor, Peter Elliott, is taking some eager volunteers to tackle the world's highest indoor bungee jump. He spent his life acting as chimps and gorillas in blockbuster movies. Today, he's teaching these guys the body language of chimps. So, I want your legs to be as short as possible. Half of his group will become alpha males. That's pretty damn good. Chimpanzees have something called a pant hoot. One of the things they use it for is building up power and confidence inside. But will they show more courage when it comes to jumping than the others who he's teaching to be lower ranking chimps? See if you can actually walk, keeping as low as you can. That is absolutely brilliant, guys, brilliant. Crouch trout down, put your arms around yourself, that nice sort of gentle, introverted feel. None of these human apes have bungee jumped before. And at 150 feet, this jump is definitely not for the faint-hearted. Just before they leap, Peter's going to get the alphas to pump themselves up and the others to act subdued. But will the alphas be the bravest when it comes to taking the plunge? Can they fake it to make it? First up are the low-ranking chimps. In the jungle, apes who adopt passive poses like this are less confident less able to act as they please. Deep spot. Peter asks his low-ranking chimps to curl into a submissive ball for two minutes before they jump. Let's see how they do. You ready for this? Oh, no, I don't think I am. It takes an average of 21 seconds for the low-ranking chimps to take the plunge. For the scariest thing I've ever done. And one of them couldn't do it at all. It, is it the height or just the challenge? I just can't explain it. It's just. Yeah, yeah. Next, it's the alphas. Alpha apes often raise their arms and scream out pant hoots in aggressive displays of confidence and dominance. But will a combination of pant hoots? And standing with their arms raised for two minutes help pump the alphas up enough to give them more confidence than the low-ranking chimps and whenever you're ready I mean every member of the alpha group jumped in under 10 seconds almost three times faster than the subordinate chimps loved it I'll do it again any day and it's all because we're hardwired to adopt wide, ape-like postures when we feel powerful. Just like this, the V-pose. Scientists have found it actually affects our hormones. Testosterone is the main male sex hormone, although it's also produced in women. Higher testosterone in men means a higher drive for dominance. Studies show that the V-pose can actually raise your testosterone by 20% while a submissive pose lowers it by 10%. But the V-pose can do even more for us. Scientists have found that it can actually lower your levels of cortisol, the stress hormone, by 25%. People with naturally lower cortisol levels tend to be more laid back. And guess what? Your average alpha-8, as well as having high testosterone, is also low in cortisol. Because being powerful is also about how you react to stress. Look at our world leaders. Do they panic when the going gets tough? Or do they seem cool and composed? Nobody is more concerned about their safety and security than I am. Alphas may be pumped full of testosterone, but they're also relaxed and effective. The key role of an alpha is to protect the group. So they have to follow our final rule. 
Be calm under pressure. When there's trouble, a good alpha male knows when to let the group sort it out for themselves. And when to step in. If the leader can't protect his group, he'll be cast out and another ape will take his place. Our grease monkey Naftali's alpha status is already on the line after he failed to get the girl. But we're going to give him one more chance to prove himself by putting his alpha status to the ultimate test. The grease monkeys know they're being filmed as they work on this old car. But what they don't know is that super alpha Greg is about to go in and shake things up. So they've already bonded as a group. What I'm going to do is go in and pick on each of them individually, kind of be an obvious threat to see if Naftali steps up to the plate and does what the Alpha should and reclaims control of his own group. Greg pretends to be a reserve team member, drafted in at the last minute. Greg, Greg. Hey, Naftali. Naftali, nice, nice to meet you. you. He's about to start causing trouble. What you got? Uh, you going the right direction? Yeah. yeah. Greg's already started to verbally and physically dominate members of Alpha Naftali's group. But Naftali doesn't seem to notice. So Greg moves on to Junior and questions his position as task manager, a role given to him by Alpha Naftali himself. We gotta organize better next. You agree? For sure. What? Hey, Justin. Yo. When we get ready to go back together with this thing, yep. You ought to be the one figuring out how things go back together, because he agrees, you know, he might not be as organized as you are, and that might, is that right? Is that right, Junior? We're, we're good. Greg's an obvious threat to the group's stability, and it's the Alpha's job to sort it out. You got it. Three, four, three, four. But there's still no reaction from Naftali. Has he hung up his Alpha boots for good, or is he just staying calm under pressure, waiting for the perfect time to step in? Greg gets the group together to try and provoke Naftali into proving his alpha credentials. Go ahead, next time we have like heavy heavy tanks, that's not more organized. You're the one that make, that's making that decision. All you're doing is going around from place to place to place, and then he's organizing. He's more organized than you are. All right, so let's get to the next task. Yeah. We're so talking we too much about it. Let's see. The rest of the group reacts to the bait, and things get out of control. I, 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 we, we all have to come to an agreement. Yeah, look, man, I, I, what's, I, I, what's the problem? You're what's talking. Problem? Yeah, so are you talking. What's the problem? Uh, let's go, let's uh, go. But will Naftali react? Has he got what it takes to be a real alpha? Uh, this is good, this is good. This man is talented, and this man is talented. We're all talented. Finally, the alpha male steps in with a brilliant, instinctive alpha move. First, he calms things down to try and regain control by complimenting the entire group. It creates cohesion and allows everyone, including himself, to remain part of the group. So in the, in the first phase, we were looking at team building or bonding, and Naftali immediately established dominance there. It was clear that he was the alpha. Ball in. The second part, he took over turf, even had people cleaning up behind him. Again, established dominance. The third piece, he was knocked off his perch. So what are you doing this long Can weekend? Can we get one more group shot? Yeah. Oh, jump the gun on that one. And then finally, in the fourth part, he's allowed someone else into the group who is starting to beat up his subordinates. He could, at some personal risk, step in and intervene. And that's what he did. That means that he really is alpha material. With that alpha male testosterone and cortisol, Naftali stayed calm under pressure before stepping in to protect his group. A true alpha indeed. In the final and most important alpha male test, we'll find out what will happen when these guys come face to face with an escaped killer gorilla? With the help of our ape cousins, we've uncovered all the secrets of how to be an alpha ape. From dominating your space to getting the girl. And above all, protecting your group. But the ultimate alpha test is what happens when the group is really under threat. So to find out, we're going to put a group of innocent people in sudden extreme danger. We've arranged for a fake party to be set up at the zoo. This is the room where all the local businessmen, everyone's gonna come. 
And here are the caterers. Chris, Nas, Moses, and Patrick. They think the party is real, but all the zoo staff, including event organizer Kellyanne, are actors. We've rigged hidden cameras all over the building. It's also ape actor Peter Elliott's chance to show off his talents as an ape man. With the help of this state-of-the-art animatronic gorilla suit, it'll help reveal which one of the unsuspecting crew is the alpha in a very stressful situation. I want to go get like all the sternos and the tablecloths and the plateware and all that kind of stuff. Their normal day of catering work is a about to get a whole lot more interesting. We just have to go up to back up and get that stuff, and then we should be fine. OK, guys, can you go back into the room, please? We're Straight back in, please. Is real, though, we'll yes, it, it, well, it's probably on. just a precaution, but you guys need to go back into the room, please. Quick as you can, please. Thank you. OK, that's my set. I've got to go. This could be serious. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We know that's just Peter going ape. But these guys think there's a 200-pound gorilla on the loose. It's got giant fists, the strength of 10 men, and could bite their heads off in a heartbeat. Please stay in here, OK? Just stay there, OK? I need to leave this door open so I can get back in. Just stay there. The zookeeper left the door open, and the group is in danger of a violent gorilla attack. Someone's got to step up. It's time to find out who's the alpha ape in this group. Hey, 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 don't worry, we're protection, all right? I don't know how you're going to protect me against an ape. Well, I won't let anything happen to you. <laughs> Trust me, I'm not... Right away, Chris steps in to reassure Kellyanne. He's speaking up stating his intention to protect a member of the group and getting the girl all at the same time. He's also keeping calm under pressure, for now at least. The gorilla gets more aggressive and Kellyanne starts to really freak out. I really don't want to die. I really don't want to die. I really don't want to die right now. I really don't want to die. Listen, listen, listen. Breathe, breathe. But this time, it's Nas who spots his chance to protect the group female. How will Chris react? Oh, my God. In true alpha ape style, Chris goes straight over to Kellyanne, physically dominating Nas, reclaiming the space around his female, and getting his girl back. Hey, hey, look at me. Oh my god. She might be comforted, but there are five people in extreme danger here. The gorilla's getting louder and closer. Also, the door's still open. Will anyone have the guts to put their life on the line and shut the door? It looks like Chris is stepping up, but will he succeed in his bid to save the day? Not satisfied with getting the girl and dominating the other males, Chris has shown he has the ultimate control of space by shutting out the gorilla, establishing a safe territory for his group, and saving their lives. He's shown that in the face of danger, a real alpha does everything necessary to keep his group and his position safe. He did it by following the alpha rules. Maybe you should too, because in the concrete jungle, we need to adapt our alpha skills all the time to suit every social occasion. So remember, make yourself look big. Master those meetings. Ace the space around you. Get out of my box. Alphas also know how to use their voice. They make sure they get the girl, and if necessary, they'll fake it to make it.
finally, of course, remember to stay calm under pressure. The key to success is to remember your primate past and embrace your inner ape. Because if you act alpha, you will be alpha. You have to spend only a few minutes in the company of apes to know how much they like a bit of the old monkey business. The need to find a mate drives a lot of animal behavior, including ours. But when it comes to romance, there is one vital difference between us and our ape cousins. Primates aren't bashful at all about sex. It's anytime, anywhere, in front of anyone. Humans are much more uptight. Watch this. This amorous ape couple are really actors. We've sent them to this crowded bar to see how onlookers respond when they turn up the heat. They're only at first base, but the reactions speak for themselves. For us, in our human urban jungle, we're, um, we're much more circumspect about sex on show. And probably the main reason is to avoid attention and therefore to avoid conflict. At first sight, the primate mating game couldn't be simpler. For many species, when a female's ready to mate, these flesh swellings tell the male she's fertile. And when they see it, they know it's time for some monkey shenanigans. In baboons, the female's body weight will increase by about 14% when they've got a swelling of pigtail macaques, even 25%. So these are really big, conspicuous signals. A female ape swelling is on her rump, in direct eye line of the male ape. Some scientists think that as we evolved to walk upright, women developed sexy swellings on their chest, so they're still in the human male's direct eye line. But unlike their ape cousin's swellings, these lady lumps are permanent. Even though we find these swellings so desirable, we've evolved from our ape cousins to become masters at disguising it. Or have we? To find out, we sent this attractive ape to an attractive shopping mall with her swellings on display and a secret camera stitched to her bra. Her mission? To see how many guys will try to sneak a peek at her beautiful beacons of fertility while engaged in innocent conversation. Would you check them out? Let's see if the guys at the mall can resist. Excuse me, do you know what time it is? Yes, it's, uh, half past 12. And do you know... First peak in under five seconds. Excuse me, do you know what time it is? Half past 12. Time and again, the guys can't resist Excuse feasting me, their eyes. If you think you'd do the same, don't feel too bad. It would seem the signals are strong, especially with the younger males. Guess how many times this young buck tries to chance a glance. Do you know the time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, ten to one. Do you work in advertising? No. Oh, I thought I knew. As you. soon as she turns away, I'm he here. grabs an eye for her. Do you know if this place is any good? Surely he won't risk another go. And there it is. Like, two okay. in the bag. I, I mean, I kind of want like an egg sandwich. Egg sandwich, that black guy in that. You think so? If they don't have it. And the boys are on a roll. Like there it is, number four. All in under 30 seconds. And to top it off, there's a bottom glance. It's socially unacceptable to stare at swellings. So unlike other apes, men struggle to ignore their primal response. We can clearly see that inner demand to take a peek. Let's go back and take another look at those fertile apes. Can you spot what they have in common? That's right, they've all got a male in tow. For most primates, it's the alpha of the group who gets the girl. And once she shows signs of being fertile, he sticks close by to make sure no one else gets their hands on her. It's called mate guarding, and it's serious business. 
See how this alpha chimp warns rivals to back off from this large-bottomed lady? His lips are more pronounced, and the hair on his body is more puffed out. He's made himself look large and impressive, a clear warning to keep away. The instinct to guard a mate is hardwired. But while most apes worry for only a few days a month when the female is looking fertile, for human beings, it's become a full-time job. So how would you react if there was a guy trying to steal your fertile-looking mate? We've rigged this spa with hidden cameras. Coming first, please. And invited lovebirds Sophia and Marco for a couple's massage. Sophia and Marco have just arrived. Sophia's in on the stunt. Her masseur is an actor named Patty. He's going to flirt with Sophia while her boyfriend's in the room. Do you want to call me up? Will Marco rise to the challenge and guard his mate? Or will he roll over and yeah, be submissive? Yeah, you just want to lie down on your front, and if you just pop your head into the hole here... Let the massage begin. Oh, yeah. Sorry I'm late. You all right, guys? Hello, you just want to pop your Sorry, head in Sorry, Mark. Kickboxing class I overran it to show some of the new black belt students some extra takedowns. Right away, you can see the tension in Marco's face as he realizes another man will be touching his girlfriend, like a chimp grooming another chimp's female. Sophia, is it? Yes. Hi, I'm nice Paddy. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good, and you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Where are you from? That's a nice accent you've got. I'm from Argentina. Oh, are you? It's a very passionate country, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm and they that. say they're very beautiful girls there. Definitely judging by you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> now you can see Marco's jaws are clenched and his nostrils are flared. Classic signs of ape aggression, as if he's preparing himself for a fight. Are you really tense up here? Oh, my. Yeah. Must, must be something stressing you out. Marco is clearly getting worked up, but the problem is he's stuck lying in a subordinate position. And right now, He's desperate to be dominant. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Your skin's so soft. Do you use anything? <laughs> uh, particular? Just moisturizer. Really? Yeah. That is incredible. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you talk too much for who do you massage, you know? I'm just trying to... No, this is my girlfriend, but... I'm just trying to do my job. Baby, calm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do your job. Talk less, you know? I'm just talking to my client. Now Marco is locked in direct eye contact with the masseur. It's threatening, but without the use of physical force. Just like a chimp who does a big threatening bluff to try and make his opponent back down. It helps avoid getting injured in an actual fight. Wow. You meant to relax with a massage, mate? That's I sick. always try to get Marcus to give me a massage, but no. he doesn't want to. It's all right. I'll take care of you. Just, just yield Thanks. into my hands. Yeah. That's sick. Your body's absolutely beautiful. Look, before you go, I'll give you my personal card, and then if ever you want another one, you can just let me know. I mean, I do house calls as well, so if you're busy, I can always, always come to you. So I do that just for special customers. <laughs> Now that is classic ape male guarding. He's lifted himself up to Patty's height, puffed himself up to look big, opened his arms and sprawled his legs, just like a chimp about to go into an aggressive display. Good thing boyfriend Marco saw the funny side when we revealed the truth. But was a joke, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I thought you lasted a lot longer than I thought you would. So Marco's proven that, just like chimps, we're hardwired to defend our mates. There are plenty more laws of attraction we share with our ape cousins. Can you guess what incredible primate truth we'll unlock with the help of this terrible twosome? No way! We've already seen the effect that female swellings have on apes and how humans are no different. But it's not just the in-your-face bumps that we're programmed to find attractive. There are far more subtle female physical traits whose origins we share with our ape cousins. 
Here's a question for you. Which face do you find most attractive? If it's the one on the right, then you've shown you're more attracted to fertile females. Because that picture is a composite image of women ovulating. And in the one on the left, they aren't. When a woman ovulates, her skin subtly changes color to become more attractive to males. A physical trick that we share with our ape cousins. As they reach peak fertility, so the color of the skin changes, gets pinker and pinker and pinker until it's really very, very bright is like a massive kind of banner to all the males to say I am absolutely at my peak fertility. The human version of this is our fertile females slightly rosier cheeks, clearer skin and redder lips, all caused by a rise in estrogen levels. Dr. Miriam Law Smith is an evolutionary psychologist. She's invited a group of men to demonstrate that just like apes, we can't help but be attracted to those subtle signs of fertility. So, take a seat here. So today you're going to be doing an experiment on attraction. Uh. So we're going to be bringing men in. It's a straightforward experiment, looking at pairs of faces and deciding which they find more attractive. As predicted, all the guys find the fertile faces more attractive. But what the guys don't know is that we're actually measuring their reactions to something else. The lab assistant who is actually two identical twins pretending to be one person. One of them is ovulating and the other one isn't. They take turns coming in and checking the sweat and heart rate monitors hooked up to the guys. But the monitors are actually measuring their body's reactions to the girls. Let's see how this guy reacts to the ovulating twin. So you can see here, just as twin A's gone in, the ovulating twin, the GSR has shot right up. He's starting to sweat a little bit. He's got a bit physiologically aroused. Over here, you've got the heart rate. That's also gone up. His heart's beating faster. There's definitely another sign that he's slightly aroused. The ovulating twin leaves. <laughs> and once our subject's body is back to baseline level, we send in the non-ovulating twin. He doesn't notice it's a different woman. Okay, so the second twin's gone in. His galvanic skin response and his heart rate have gone up. But interestingly, not quite as much as when the first twin, the ovulating twin, went in. On average, the men's response to the ovulating twin is almost ten times greater than the non-ovulating twin, no matter which one went into the room first. You can see it's gone right up as soon as she walked in the door. The twins help demonstrate that human males, like male apes, are visually more attracted to women when they're fertile. But those ape swellings also produce an odor to help male chimps sniff out an ovulating female. Can humans do the same? To find out, we take our test one step further by bagging up the t-shirts the twins wore last night. Will our guys, like apes, be able to sniff out the fertile female? So I'd like you to have a smell of each of these right, okay. and tell me which one you find most attractive. Mm -hmm. Just put your head in and have a, have a good whiff. <laughs> Female body odor changes subtly during ovulation, so the t-shirts will okay. smell different. And to make it a fair test, neither twin has used any perfume or deodorant. Which one do you prefer? I prefer A. 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 Well, interestingly enough, actually, T-shirt A is worn by a lady who's currently ovulating. So you picked the lady who's fertile over the lady that isn't fertile. Okay. Okay? Cool. And I'd just like to bring in the lady who was wow. wearing T-shirt A. Yay! Okay? And so she's currently ovulating. You prefer the smell of hers. And I'd like to bring in the lady who's wearing T-shirt B. No way! <laughs> <laughs> We found that in the t-shirt test, 100% of our men actually preferred the t-shirt worn by the ovulating twin, which is a fantastic result. We also found some really interesting results on the physiological data, so the heart rate and the sweat response, which is great. It really shows that they're slightly more attracted to that twin. So just like our ape cousins, we can't help but be attracted to fertile females. But can primates teach us anything about how to get the girl?
armed only with ape mating strategies, what chance do you give these guys of winning over this crowd? So what can the average ape teach you about getting a girl? Well, for starters, follow an ape's furry footsteps and learn how to make a good first impression. Our chimpanzee male cousins have it all figured out. When you're dominant, you get all the females you want and all the mating you want. So to catch a girl's eye, simply follow the rules of a successful male ape. And it's easy to spot him, head held high and surrounded by others. But what makes him so successful? Number one is his confidence. See how he walks with a purpose? He also looks impressive with a beautifully groomed coat, thanks to all the attention he gets. And he holds a direct gaze when showing a female attention. Primatologist Isabel Benke Izquierdo has spent months in the wild studying ape behavior. She'll use her expertise to teach us what to and what not to do to achieve success in the world of human dating. In this experiment, we'll hopefully demonstrate that the same principles that underlie mate choice in our ape cousins in the jungle are at work in humans. Isabel has invited a gaggle of single women to a charity auction to bid on this group of hot young studs. You are the kind of male that every great ape female wants. Isabel teaches one half of the group the character traits of high status male apes. First, in terms of body language, great apes are confident, are dominant. So it's very important that your shoulders are back, that you start comfortably, and very importantly, look at women's eyes. And this half of the group, character traits of low status apes. You are submissive. You have a closed body position. You don't want to advertise yourself very much. There's also some signs that we use to tell when a great ape is stressed, which are called displacement activities. So self-scratching, for instance, or perhaps sometimes touch your face. If the rules of ape dating school are to be believed, then our four high-status apes should fetch the highest price at auction. It's time to release okay. the studs. Then can we get our hands together for these awesome guys? First up, our low status boys, who are trained to display less desirable character traits. Look at this guy. With his head down, he's completely nailed the submissive chimp look. We have here a great ape who is a subordinate. He doesn't signal uh, confidence or dominance, assertiveness, so female primates in generally will not go for this kind of great ape. Can I start bidding at one dollar? This guy might appear confident, but look closer. He's ungroomed and his hands show nervous displacement activity. Okay, sold! Well, there's an obvious flaw with this guy. His shirt is not bottomed properly, so that suggests lack of coordination, and that is not a uh, desirable quality, given that if you have children with this person, they will probably inherit that. Look at our last low-ranking ape. He immediately puts his hands in his pockets, and like a nervous chimp, his eyes are darting around. Yeah. Can I start the bidding at one dollar? Five dollars. Oh. Total bids for the less desirable apes add up to twenty-eight dollars. Will our high-status apes get the girls spending? Check out this guy. Head held high, confident strut, and perfectly groomed. He's signaling genetic fitness, so he's probably very healthy. His coat, so to say, is perfect, so that's very attractive. Look at that! Confident entrance and owning his space. 
He should get the girls bidding. He's wearing glasses. He's wearing this kind of academic type attire, signaling big time intelligence. Intelligence is a trait that is universally liked by female great apes. Check out these intelligent chimps, breaking nuts using sticks as tools. Intelligence is a highly inheritable trait that's very attractive. Okay, we're done. 20. <laughs> Big smiles and groomed to perfection. Look how he's showing himself off to the girls. Female primates, they also go for the for personality traits. Being nice and openness are highly desirable qualities. So well done. This guy stands fully upright. Watch how he holds his gaze around the room. He's definitely a dominant ape. I think this guy's gonna do really well. <laughs> After all that frenzied bidding, our high-status apes make a grand total of $62, more than twice as much as our low-status apes. So, guys, there you have it. To make a good first impression on the ladies, simply follow our eight rules of attraction. Walk with confidence. Have a groomed appearance. Show off inheritable traits. Problem solving, intelligence, and genetic fitness are all signs that show you're a male worth breeding with. But what if you're not naturally dominant and well-groomed? How can a less successful male attract a mate? Our primate cousins have another strategy. Female apes have a soft spot for one type of male in particular. Males who are kind and gentle to infants. In the ape world, the females are mainly left to bring up the offspring. But just look how this huge male carries off the baby chimp. At first, mom stays close by, slightly nervous of his intentions. But when the big burly male shows his play face, she quickly relaxes, clearly enjoying his nurturing soft side. In baboon society, often a new male, when he comes into the group, he will um, spend a lot of time playing with infants and grooming infants of a particular female to basically ingratiate himself with her. And for humans, it's not that different. We also find it very attractive when we see a man that's obviously got a nurturing side has that protective streak and um, is good with little children and, and fluffy animals to demonstrate the effect of this nurturing side we rigged this street with hidden cameras Chris who's not usually lucky with the ladies is going to ask complete strangers to dig deep in his pocket and retrieve his car keys first he carries some rather heavy fruit then he'll have his arms full with cute puppies. Will what he's carrying have an effect on the way passersby respond to him? Watch how people react when he has the melons to worry about. Sorry, can you help me get my melons in the... In the car, sorry, can you... Sorry, can you just help me with my melons into the car? Sorry? It's a no-go. But now watch how differently people react when his hands are filled with those adorable puppies. Oh, yeah, look at my face. Stupid puppies. I'm just trying to get the puppies in, in the car. The keys in my, in my pocket is, is... Right away, a complete stranger is willing to put her hand in Chris's pocket to retrieve his keys. Look, I think my keys are in, in my pocket. By behaving in a nurturing, fatherly way towards the puppies, oh, sorry. Chris... Sorry finally gets female attention. I can try and get these two in. Um, <laughs> thank you very, very much for this. Thank you. <laughs> more women, more than happy to help. Any chance you just get the keys? Uh, here? Uh, yeah, it should just be in my pocket. Yeah, yeah, they're and they're even good. willing to go one step further and help him with his dog carriers, too. Oh, that's brilliant. Maybe one in the, uh, the back and one in the front. Those puppy dog eyes have got these strangers eating out of the palm of his hand. Because that one likes you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So why did the women choose to help? 
It's never happened to me before, but uh, he had, you know, a person had two puppies and couldn't put them on the ground, but it gives you a safe uh, impression of a man, so I decided to help. You know what, a man holding a puppy like a baby. <laughs> it's very sweet. We don't need to look far to see that the strong nurturing type works just as well for human females as it does for apes. But why? Evolution has ensured that our young look adorable. Their big, wide-set eyes and large heads make them appear cute and appealing, and our primal response is to care for them. For women, a dominant male nurturing the young appeals to their primal instincts. It's the exact reason we always see politicians kissing babies on the campaign trail. So if you want to get into her heart, make like a caring chimp or a baby-loving bonobo and show off your nurturing side. But when the lights go down, you need different tactics. What happens when our primate actors hit the town? Can they find love the ape way? Oh my God! We've been looking at the laws of attraction you can borrow from our ape cousins to help you get the girl. We've seen how to sniff a potential mate and how to make the best first impression. Now it's time to get serious. You need to make the move. When it comes to charming the ladies, there's an ape who really stands out. Meet the bonobo. Along with chimpanzees, they're our closest living relative. Humans, chimpanzees and bonobos share a common ancestor, a kind of evolutionary grandmother that lived seven million years ago. Humans and bonobos share 98% of the same genes, and they're one of the only non-human primates to regularly mate face-to-face -face for pleasure. At first sight, bonobos can be mistaken for chimpanzees, but they are distinguished by their middle parted hair more slender build, and bright pink lips. The physical differences are nothing compared to their alternative approaches to social living and mate choice. Chimpanzees have a society which is hierarchical, male-dominated. They hunt, they use tools, and aggression is common. Bonobos, on the other hand, are female-dominated. Females form very strong bonds and coalitions, and they are very playful, tolerant, and cohesive. So, in a nutshell, it's like bonobos are the hippies of the jungle. They're kind of the make love, not war ape. But guys, which approach do you think will work best when it comes to making that move? A playful bonobo or a confident chimp? Our male actors are back and about to be let loose on this buzzing silent disco full of gorgeous single ladies. Their challenge? To get a girl's phone number. First, primatologist Isabel helps our guys channel their inner ape. To truly discover female preference, these two will be our bonobos, and these two will be our chimps. Bonobos are hippies of the jungle. They are caring and they're playful. Your approach will be confident, but not over dominant. Right? Ask about them, not just talk about yourself. It's very important that you consider them, that you invite them in the interaction. I, they have the choice. Today, I need you to embody the dating style that we're going to call chimpanzee. Cool. Right? <laughs> Chimpanzees are different in that they are male-dominated society and use aggression. So body language has to be overly confident, right? Don't use nice humor. You are assuming you will get the girl. It's not about allowing female choice. Watch out, ladies. Here come the apes. Our chimp moves straight in, full of confidence. Hey, you've got great legs. What time are they open? Chimps are coming on too strong. They're speaking at the girls. Let's go. Our chimp is approaching the girls very kind of in an aggressive stance. I 
touching them without being invited to touch. So he's ignoring the fact that human females have choice over who they choose. So that's why it's not working. Your, your phone's charged, right? Yeah, why? You should probably call your mom and let her know you're not coming back to me. There's no female choice here. Our chimp is literally telling her what to do. Yeah, she picks a different perfume. Okay. So did the chimps manage to get any cell numbers? Mind if I get your number? No, I'm good. That comes as no surprise. Hey, can I have your number anyways? No. no? Are you moving on to her so fast? You started out with me. Mind if I get your number? Sorry. No. Every time our in-your-face chimps get snubbed. Clearly, our cheesy chaps are not attractive apes. Let's see how our bonobos do. Pardon me, what's your name? Ali. Ali? I'm Jeff. Hi. I'm Sasha. Kelly. Nice to meet you. What do you what do you do in, in life? I write. I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Where are you from? Miami. What do you actually do? I'm Carlito. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you like it? Our charmers get a more positive response. Gotta go for a spin. Okay, this is great. They're dancing together. She's smiling. He has succeeded in making her laugh. So what kind of stuff do you write? Isolation and various forms because I lived in Iceland for three years. And... The only things I know how to say in Icelandic are like, Ski to eat good? Well, this is interesting. He can speak Icelandic and she's very surprised. She laughed and then she touches her hair. So that could be an example of assortative mating, as in like, like searches like. And when it comes to getting those digits, it's a different story for the bonobos. If you give me your number, I'll give you a text on time. What's your name? Ali. Bingo! Our bonobo invested his time in the girl, and he gets the ultimate prize, her contact info. He was in a nutshell, nice, good looking, and fit. So female apes like, like that. And there you have it. When making your move, keep that full-on chimp locked deep away and let your inner fun-loving bonobo come out to play. This cocky monkey thinks he's the master of sweet talk, but can his charming chatter win over these ladies? You are very beautiful. Thanks to our ape cousins, you now know how to get a female's attention and make your move. Here's the tricky part. Winning her over. Even dominant chimps have to do a little legwork to keep their females sweet. This confident ape pampers his female with the grooming session, cementing their bond. Grooming is very important amongst primates as a way of basically cementing social relationships, forming close bonds, male uh, chimps and baboons will often groom females when they're trying to take them away on consortship. Basically, it's their way of kind of chatting off the female. We do that with compliments. Sharon, you're so beautiful! In humans, compliments really do kickstart arousal and make us more receptive to a potential mate. To prove it, we invited students to do some market research. Take a seat. We sat them in front of a thermal imaging camera. It registers the change in temperature of their faces. What they don't know is that our smooth-talking interviewer is going to bombard them with flattery. Uh, we're working in tandem with a local zoo, and we're Ooh. trying to basically... First, he lulls them into a false sense of security. Whether or not people would be interested in adopting zoo animals. OK. What, if anything, would make you want to adopt a zoo animal? They're cute. Then, oh, surprises like them with the first compliment. Threatened. OK. Mm. You have very nice eyes. Thank you. <laughs> really nice. Thanks. So, she certainly uh, wasn't expecting that. Was Time to go thermal and see if her temperature has increased. Immediately, it goes up from 93 to 94.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Clear sign she's becoming physiologically aroused. Do you have a boyfriend? No. No. No, <laughs> no one wants me. I'm forever alone. That's good news. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. 
Um, another compliment and another increase okay. in temperature, up by another two degrees. You have very nice eyes, by the way. Oh, thanks. You do. Very nice. Thank Our you. friendly Sorry. interviewer scores big with other students. I like your hair, by the way. Thanks. I like cutting hair. Okay. The thermal image uh, camera showed really increased nice temperature you. after every compliment. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Especially with this girl. Actually, you are very beautiful. <laughs> you are. Thank you. Her temperature went up by a whopping five degrees. So compliments cause a physiological response. But look a little closer, and you can see that her body language alters too. And it's here that our inner ape is truly revealed. When this female is being groomed, she shows submissive behavior. Look here at her lowered head, averting the male's gaze. This says, I'm not a threat, and I'm receptive to your advances. So let's rewind our students. You have very nice eyes. Thank you. <laughs> really nice. Thanks. Sorry. OK, well, not only has her temperature increased, but she looks down. Again, quite submissive, but friendly. And she's kind of like, I feel a little uncomfortable, but I want to be friends. It's not the only submissive behavior on display. Two chimps meet. Basically, if one is slightly submissive, it grins slightly. That's a fear grin. That's actually saying I'm not a threat. And in the long term, that means I'm friendly. And so that little fear grin has gradually evolved into our smile. And we have all sorts of other little subtle gestures that basically say I'm not a threat and have now have the meaning that I'm actually being friendly. I'm being responsive to you. Actually, you are very beautiful. <laughs> you are. Thank you. There, she very clearly, after seeing that kind of physiological change, she also had the body language where she leans forward and then gives him this massive smile. Um, you know, obviously a very, very friendly gesture. So just like female apes, our students react with submissive gestures, signaling their interest and receptiveness to the interviewer's compliments. Yeah, I, I think I did blush, yeah. I probably blushed, yeah, when I received those compliments. It was quite cute. <laughs> yeah. The battle to woo a female heart isn't over yet. Who will win the ultimate Bonobo versus Chimp Challenge? When it comes to making the move, apes groom their potential mate, and humans complement each other. If we look deeper into the primate world, we can see the parallels of some of our more flirtatious behaviors. Watch how the female talk macaque flutters her eyelashes to show off her blue eyelids to subtly signal her romantic interest. And check out Jennifer Aniston on the red carpet with Gerard Butler. Fluttering eyelashes, submissive glances, and lingering gazes. We may have evolved to suppress the urge to mate in public, but there are some signs of attraction we just can't hide. Complimenting and flirtation are not the only things we use to attract a mate. Like our ape cousins, we also use food. For bonobos, their female-led society means the ladies get first pick of the food and choose who they mate with. Bonobo males have to sit and wait until the females invite them to join the fun. In the chimp world, it's males who allow females to sit and share their food, making it likelier she'll mate with them. Atta boy. But they're often selfish and don't share, which is too bad, because female chimps mate twice as often with those who will share. Sound good? Let's put it to the test. Will generosity allow our date-hungry guys to seal the deal? In this experiment, we're setting up a speed dating scenario. We're going to assess female reactions to two very different types of male behavior. Ben is going to behave like a bonobo, showing signals of generosity. Charlie will act more like a selfish chimpanzee, completely ungenerous. They have just five minutes to impress their date. These might not appear huge, but they are signals, i.e. indications of future potential for investment and sharing of resources. 
over to our chimp, Charlie. Hi. I'm Charlie. I'm Courtney. Courtney. Nice to meet you. Can I get you guys anything to drink? Uh, uh Coke. Okay. Can I go water? Sure. Thank you. Hmm. This is very interesting. He jumped to order first, i.e. he didn't defer to her. Um, in primate terms, this is equivalent to what male chimpanzees do in that they have priority access to food. So clearly she didn't like this and you can see kind of the gesture in the eyes. Can I get you guys anything to drink? Um, I have a, just say Coke. Coke? Yeah. I'll have a water. Okay. Thank you. Exactly the same happened in this case. Her lips become tight and kind of her stare more fixed. He immediately becomes a less attractive ape. Let's see how our bonobo, Ben, compares. Hi. Uh, sure. I can have a water, please? Sure. I'll have a, I'll have a tonic water, please. Tonic water? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Immediately, we see that Ben is being more bonobo-like, if you want. He is being more open, more friendly. He's attentive to her. He waits for her to order. You can see the difference in her face. She's smiling, she's more open. There's not that rigidness that we just saw. And now, the ultimate test, sharing food. Come on, guys, be honest. How many of you have helped yourself before offering a girl? I didn't really, like... I mean, I guess it didn't really pan out super well, um, but, uh, you know, I work for a, I work for a, a medical supply company. The first thing that happens is that Charlie pulls immediately the foot towards him. She looks downwards. She is not happy, and she drinks from her glass. This is a parallel to what great apes do called displacement behavior, a repetitive self-scratching, for example, that serves to appease stress, i.e. situations where an individual is at unease. One of my best friends. Peace. Thank you. You, uh, you visit the other galleries often then, too? He's very explicitly offering the food to her, i.e. He, he's giving her priority access to food. This mirrors what happens in bonobo society, where females have priority access to food. She likes this trait of generous behavior because it signals the potential of investment, of caring in the long term. Good luck. Take it easy. Take care. Thank you. Okay. It's obvious. Humans, like chimps, make initial assessments of potential mates in minutes. So lock that selfish inner chimp away and make like a generous bonobo where it's always ladies first. When it comes to sex, we private pair bonding humans are a far cry from our promiscuous exhibitionist ape cousins. But deep down, we are all still driven by the same primal urges. So remember, read the signs, however subtle. Show off your groomed, confident exterior and flaunt those inheritable traits. Be like a free-loving, generous bonobo. Please. And not a selfish, arrogant chimp. Because after all, we all want to find the perfect mate. <laughs>